am Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're in the suburbs of Chicago. And I'm with John. John, what's your last name? John Strew. John Strew. And in the beginning of the muscle car in 64, granted you could say there were other muscle cars before, but this was clearly where they were marketing specifically the muscle car. And which one in particular, this John? This is a 64 Pontiac GTO. And the 64 Pontiac GTO, the one you're going to see, was born on... Uh, November the 26th of 63. It was a real early one. 63 for the 64. Right. Let's take a look at our featured yeah, attraction. So here we have the beginning. Now John, how long have you had this car? I've had this car five years. I bought it uh, just about five years ago to the day. Five years ago in October. And this one, come on with me. Thank you. This one is somewhat of the plain Jane GTO. And you shared with me this one has the post, as you can see. This is a post coupe with no no power options. It, the only options it had was a tinted windshield. It had uh, seat belts, an AM radio. Uh, it had the tri-power, four-speed. And... Uh, the deluxe uh, steering wheel. Now you had shared with me that um, originally this car came out of where? The car was built in Pontiac, Michigan, but it was ordered by the original owner. Uh, he lived in uh, he lived in uh, Saint Simon's Island in Georgia, and he bought it from a dealership called. Uh, Boomer Shine Pontiac in Atlanta, Georgia. Bias plies. The single mirror on the side. The faux hood scoops. The wing mirrors or winged uh, side vent windows. Splitter exhaust. Now, was this one all original when you found it, or you had to bring it back to original? It was modified slightly, just just little stuff. But it, it took some time just to just to research it and uh, and bring it back to where it was off the line. Well, you added that. I didn't. One of the previous owners did. Gotcha. I was going to say because that usually wasn't there. That's exactly right. Wonderful. Let's take a look at some trunk and treats. So right off the bat, we can see the 64 GTO there. Jim Wangers, 04 creator of the marketing project that put this car together. You can see the 454 here, which you'll see later on a tag inside the car. And we're going to take you here first. So there's your build plate. This talks about some of the codes. You can pause on that. Give you time. Here's some of your option codes. Now, John, the GTO was, and this will be a good example, this is actually your car. And here we're showing the actual original document window sticker for your car. Yes. Which doesn't show many options there. I'll take this out this way just so we can kind of see this. What is this now? It's a bill of sale. Bill of sale. I want to show this. This was the record at the time. The GTO. Is that little Ronnie? GTO from Ronnie and the Daytonas. Little GTO Ronnie and the Daytonas, the 45. And notice in the owner's guide, you don't see the word GTO listed there because it was an option for the Le Mans. Is that correct? Exactly. That's exactly the way it was. 64. 
owner's protection plan with the original original protector I plate identity O plate yep. Just some of the pieces here as you can see I'll just take a couple of quick looks at the owner's guide the Pontiac zone offices but I want to show you some of these brochures so notice in this brochure and I won't take as much time because interestingly enough, although this is the 64 brochure, and you'll clearly see here some great photographs of the Le Mans, Le Mans. You got this young man staring into the cookie jar. Again, I'll go a little faster here. Give you enough time to pause. You know, some interesting this picture of your cat. This young man with the little tiger. You're starting to see the tiger in the tank. He's giving you an idea. Again, no GTO. The custom convertible, as it was called there. Nothing like eating your ice cream with your youngster in the buff. That's probably how I used to eat ice cream. I used to run to the car and just take my drawers off and just sit in the passenger side and wait for Dad to come give me a ride. And then, of course, the ladies get a little bigger. As you can see, and I'll kind of cruise through this young lady here. And although we're one more photograph I think to share with you in there that's worthy of sharing is uh, the wagon. And much like my wife, she's usually waiting for me in the wagon to, to come home and just waiting for a good roll. So here's a uh, roll around to the local grocery store. And you can see the Tempest. So here, Is your Tempest 64 GGO book, but this one was a little add-on. And this little add-on, well, it made quite the little difference. There's our car here with the post. To be perfectly honest, the GTO is not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> it sure is mine. Here's your engine options. We'll start there with options and accessories. We'll take our time. ratios you'll find one of these on each side a 6.5 liter or the way it's pronounced there litere a three-speed manual Here's our look under the hood that you'll see in a second. There's that wheel, the custom sports wheel. And as you can see, our tips that we have. And that's just wonderful. We'll take a look here in the interior. Get that bucket look here. Some vinyl seating. 
give you your overall interior package. Our three pedals. Our Pontiac here. Notice on the early one, just that badge there does not say GTO on the door. It says it on the DF. Right? Um, it's a transport guy when he was trying to get it off of the truck. And the wood rim is great. Go ahead. He couldn't start it. He was cranking and cranking and cranking and it wouldn't start. And I asked him, I said, was there any special starting instructions? He says, yeah, there is. And he handed me a piece of paper to tell me about the kill switch right here. So I flipped the kill switch. Bingo, it started. And was that is that something that was standard no. on the 64? No. Just no, on this that, one? That was that was just added by a previous... Okay, order. all right. And then we have a uh, updated stereo, some updated gauges. I tried but to the, keep them very correct. Oh, yeah, then. this is great. Is the... Uh, we don't have the 6.5 there. Is this steering wheel? We've got the wood wheel. Did yeah, that come with the car? Wheel. Yeah, that's a sport wheel. That's great. Let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look under the hood, shall we? So while we're in the interior, as I pull down the passenger visor, we've got two John. What a gorgeous original '64 Jim Wangers, who was the uh, marketing director, who got this off the ground. So the owner before you was John, and it went to John. And it went to John. That is John to John. That's perfect. Yep. Show you can see there's a metal flake in that paint. Do it just right. So John, here we are under the hood, and with this one, you can see all the details. What was your first reaction when you saw you came home off the trailer and you saw this? And you'll see that 454 there. The first reaction was I, I, I was there. I was so happy that this that it finally made it home. And and uh, it just seems like it takes forever when you're having a car shipped home. Yeah. But any but anyway, uh, it uh, got the car off the trailer and it and it just ran. It ran great. It just ran great. Just like just like the owner, the previous owner said. You know, it's nice when uh, when it matches, right? Absolutely. And that's what I tried to do when I was little by little. I tried to put it back exactly the way it would have been in November of 63. I see all the correct hoses. Nice to see the tri-power. 389. Proper stampings. Clamps I changed out. The hoses I, I changed out. It really looks clean. The alternator was changed. To a date coded one. Is that right? Well, let's fire it up, shall we? Sure. We'll uh, let it idle. I'll stand behind it. We'll press the brakes for a moment to see the tail lights. And uh, of course, we'll give it a good rev. the reaction when you're driving this this is just a great car to drive and it, it's it's so it 
so hard to keep your foot out of it. <laughs> you, re you really have to use a little <clears throat> discretion uh, when you're driving it because you just want to get on it. You just want to go. <laughs> you want a GT go. You want a GT go. That's what's, exactly right. What's people's reactions when they see it? Oh, I get a lot of a lot of waves and a lot of thumbs up and hey. it's, a, it's a friend maker. Yeah, it really is. Right, we'll take it for a ride. Yeah, let's come on. Let's go. John, how do you like driving it? I love driving this car. This car is just is just great. It's just <laughs> great. You just get in a good mood when you drive this car. You get turned on. You really do. It takes GTO, you get turned on. It takes you back a few years and it just it's just how you remember them. It's just it's just that way. I love, I love the fact that you have the first one. Do people know that or no? This is one of the, it's the first year for the GTO, and this is also an early build. It was built... How do you know that? By uh, decoding the, the uh, tags. Okay. Um, and the uh, PHS, the Pontiac Historical Society uh, documents. And uh, it was uh, ordered by a guy in, uh, in Georgia, St. Simon's Island, he lived on. And he ordered it from Boomer Shine Pontiac in Atlanta, Georgia. How'd you find that out? I called him. <laughs> I what, called him. I, I, Googled it. I Googled his name. Yeah. I Googled his name and uh, it popped up. His name popped up, and I thought I'll give it a I'll give it a shot. Called him up. Lady answered the phone. I asked if, if John was there. She said, "Yep." Hang on a second. Put him on the phone, and I asked him. I, I told him who I was, and I asked him if uh, if he once had a '64 GTO. He said, "Boy, I sure did." He said, and he told me all about it. He remembered the salesman's name. He remembered how much of a down payment he made. He remembered everything, everything about the car. He wanted a 64 Catalina. He wanted a, a 421 Catalina. That's what he was going to order. But he said it was too much money and he was walking out. He saw a banner on the wall and it said something about a GTO. And he said to the salesman, he said, what's a GTO? The salesman said, I don't know. He said, let me find out. So, got another salesman, and uh, he bought, he, he ordered one. He, he just gave me this and that. This car has basically no options. It, it, it had an AM radio, uh, seat belts, no power steering, no power brakes, but it's a four-speed tri-power. Oh, it's got tinted windshield too. But it's a coupe. That's what I thought was pretty neat. I always liked the looks of the coupe. Back in the day, that was the that was the lightest. That that was the one you used for racing. <laughs> That'll get you turned on. It'll, uh, That'll yeah. get you turned on. Yeah. We're smiling like seven-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, we're, and we're both looking for the cops. Yeah. Uh. Just as like, just we should. Uh. Oh, we, did, we, we kept within the legal speed limits as usual. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are no bending of the laws around here, let me tell you. But, uh, Sounds great. 